God said, I want to heal the broken places in your soul so you can view yourself the way I see you and I can get the full use and benefit out of your life. And I want to bring you from a place of stuff and bring you to an a, a abundant place, a rich place, a wealthy place in your life. I want to bring you to a place where you healthy about yourself so you're not intimidated by nobody you don't shrink back from opportunities you run to opportunities and you don't see everybody else as being the one that succeeds but you see what why not me see some of you need to say well, well, why not why it won't work for me what's the difference between those that make it and those that didn't make it they're thinking to do something for God and I'm telling you if you don't intentionally stir the fire of God up in you it's not going to happen you have to stir it up that's what Paul told Timothy he said stir up the gift of God that is in you you gotta stir it up amen let's go ahead and have your seat John chapter 12 you know, when, when I got saved, when I first got born again, there was such an urgency to get souls saved. And one thing that I found out is the way that you lose your contagiousness is when you, you take your focus off of Christ and you take your focus off of the things of God and you begin to put your focus on the things of this world. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3 that we are to set our affections on things above and not on things on the earth. I'm here to tell you. He said, if you love the world and the things of the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He said, if you begin to love the world system, he's not talking about the earth. He's talking about the world and its system. This is what he said in 1 John. The love of the Father will not be in you. And so the reason some of you are not contagious and, and, and you, you having a hard time just having energy for God is because your focus is on the world system. And that world system is killing the life of Christ in you. It's killing your contagiousness. But yet you can be contagious for the worldly things. You can be contagious for things that don't really matter. I'm a Cowboy fan, and so we got a big game today, but really that don't matter. Whether they win or lose, it ain't going to determine nobody's eternal destiny. I want them to win, but it ain't going to determine the outcome of where somebody's going to spend eternity. But what I do with Christ, if I lose my contagiousness for God, it can be the difference between somebody making it to heaven or not. Just like it was when I went to the man's house and God said this was his last time hearing the gospel. And I was the one giving the responsibility of sharing the gospel with him. That's a heavy responsibility. But many of us, we're, we're, we're not conscious of that because we're living life. And while we're living life, we are missing life. And life is to be intentional for Christ. And if you don't make a decision that you're going to be intentional about what you do for Christ, it's not going to happen. See, this is the problem where people get religious. They think something just going to come on you. You got to have a feeling that come on you. Some people don't speak in tongue unless it come up out of them. They, they, they don't know the word. It ain't going to just come on you. Sometimes you just got to stir it up. You just start doing it, and then, the, then you're going to begin to feel something. When, you, when he declare healing over your life, you may, may not feel healed. But it's, it, don't, it don't have anything to do with what you feel. It's what did he say? And so I'm telling you, if you're going to be a contagious believer of Christ, you got to begin to decree the contagiousness over you. you got to begin to do what contagious people do. But if you think it's just going to happen just because you want it to happen, it's not going to happen. You got to be intentional. You got to step outside the boat and step on the water. 
You can't say, Jesus, tell me to come, and then I'll be able to walk on water, but you never get out of the boat. No, you're going to have to get out of the boat. You're going to have to make a decision that, listen, I'm going to even do it afraid. Because, see, one thing you got to understand, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So anytime fear show up, it's the enemy trying to paralyze you from the will of God. And many of us, we won't do God's will because we're scared. God done spoke some things about business. He spoke things about changing jobs, about going back to school, about doing a lot of different things. But you scared. But God said, I didn't give you no spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That didn't come from me. So the enemy want to paralyze you. And so many of you, now you want to be contagious, but you scared. And so we're going to teach you how to be contagious. There's a movement that is going on, and we want it to go all over. Look with me in John chapter 12. We got work that we have to do. Glory to God. Look what it says in verse 24. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to see this. Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain or much fruit. Look what he's saying. Unless we choose to die to ourselves and give our life away for the sake of the gospel, we only going to have what we have. But if we choose to give up our life and die for God, now we can bear much fruit. You can't take and have the focus about yourself. If Jesus chose to only think of himself, he would have only been the only son of God. He would have been the only son. Because there would have been no way of redemption until he planted himself into the earth and he brought forth many sons. You're going to have to plant yourself in the hearts of men and women. If you don't plant yourself in their hearts, they're not going to come into the kingdom. You're going to have to die. You're going to have to die to your insecurities. You're going to have to die to your feelings. You're going to have to die to what you think you know or what you don't know. And as a matter of fact, if you don't know what it takes to get people born again, you ought to do whatever it takes to find out how. See, one of the things I found out, a lot of people in the body not hungry. We just religious. So we do things out of form and fashion. We do things out of duty and obligation. We don't do it out of the calling and the compelling of the spirit of God. Do you think Holy Spirit want to sit and, and, and not move? Do, do you know why the Spirit of God shows up in a place? It shows up to stir us to do something for the Lord. He ain't come to touch you just so you can get goosebumps on you. He touched you so you can advance the kingdom of heaven. What good is it to be on fire and be revived for God if you're not going to do anything? What good is to get more gifts, more power? Lord, give me more anointing. What good is an anointing if you're not going to remove any burdens or destroy any yokes? And God is not a wasteful God. And if you're not faithful with what he's already given you, he's not going to give you more. And so we got to learn how to die. We got to learn how to plant ourselves into the kingdom of God that we may bring forth more fruit for God. A hundred years from now, the most important thing going to be in your life is what you did for God. Nothing else is going to matter. You're not going to be thinking about your 401k plan a hundred years from now. Because a hundred years from now, all of you will be in eternity. You're not going to be thinking about, uh, I, I should have worked a couple of more hours on my job. No, what you're going to be thinking about, I should have done more for Jesus. Because now you begin to understand the severity of what the mandate it has been given to us. Now, I want you to go back and think about this. And we've talked about it before. Jesus had finished when he died on the cross and resurrected. Why didn't he go straight to heaven? He spent 40 more days on earth. 
The reason he didn't go immediately to heaven because the message was lost. The ones he had had with him three and a half years that walked with him and he shared the message and he told them what was going to happen. They didn't even believe it. He died. They scattered. He kept telling them, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again in three days. I'm going to tear this temple down and I'm going to raise it back up in three days. Oh, I'm about to go. You done read John chapter 14. What happened when he said he was about to go? Said The Bible said they were filled with sorrow. Why are you sorrowful? He, he had to begin to preach a whole sermon. A sermon that many people use for, for funerals and stuff. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many masses. If it wasn't not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and where I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And so here it is. Philip, like, what, what, what are you talking about, God? He said, I, I want, what's the way? He said, have you been with me this, t- this long and you don't know the way? He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Then he went on as he jumped on over farther than John. He said, it's better for me to go away. He said, because if I don't go, now I can't send you to help her. He said, but if I leave, I'm going to send you somebody that's not going to leave you. He's going to be in with you and he's going to be in you. He's going to be your helper. He's going to be your advocate. He's going to be your standby. He's going to teach you how to navigate yourself through this life. He's going to teach you how to be a witness for me. He's going to teach you how to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God. He said, I go to prepare that place. He had to spend 40 more days getting them back in line because the closest ones to him who walked with him and heard the messages, who got the inside scoop, still didn't know who they were rolling with. I want to ask you a question. Do you know what church you at? No, do you really know? I know you like the music and you like the lights and, oh, oh, Pastor Wade can preach, but do you really know the vision? Do you know who you rolling with? Do you know we really beat our heart beat for lost people? Do you really know our heart beat for the broken, the scattered, and the hurting? Because if, if your heart beat for it, you'll have the same urgency that everybody. Because if you knew what you were connected to, something would leap on the inside of you. And it would compel you to do something about what's going on around you. Or are you just religious and joining a church like your grandmama's church? Didn't do nothing then and not doing nothing now. We got to be contagious. But you're not going to be contagious trying to live your life. You're going to have to die. But people trying to hold on to their life and hold on to God's stuff too. I'm here to tell you in the kingdom it's, it's called sacrifice. God was speaking to me while we was in worship. He said we have a Christianity of comfort. He said people want this gospel to be about them but it's not about them it's about me. We even choose churches like that. What you going to do for me? Even get mad at God if, if, if things in your life ain't going the way you want it to go. So you're not, you're not really walking with the gospel that we call to because you've been listening to an Americanized gospel. You're not listening to the gospel of the Bible because the gospel of the Bible, people are always under pressure. Oh, let me preach again. The gospel of the Bible, people were always under pressure. They were always on the run. They was always going through something. But we didn't get a westernized gospel, a gospel of comfort, a gospel of a God that works for us and us not us working for him. A God that if things ain't don't line up right in my life, something must be wrong. So God I ain't finna serve you till you get my life in order. That's not the gospel of the Bible. The gospel of the Bible, you're going to be under pressure. They're going to want to kill you for this gospel. They're going to get offended when you tell them the truth. 
And some of y'all get offended. Why he got to say that like that? Y'all who he think he is. I think I'm going to preach up the gospel full of the anointing. And sometimes you so much in your complacency and so much sleep that you got to say something to shake you and wake you up. If not, you're going to stay dead and full of no life of God in you. You don't see nobody about to walk in front of a car and get hit and say, excuse me, a car is coming. A car, watch the car. Where's the car? No, you're going to say it's a car coming. You're about to lose your life. And we in churches now, people don't have no passion for God, but yet got passion for everything else. Oh, I'm just really a quiet person. Watch them at the Grizzlies game. I'm just really reserved and quiet. That's because you ain't doing what you really like. That which you really like, you come on out. But I refuse to have anything be in competition with me and God. I'm not going to be more contagious and excited about anything else but God. I'm not going to be a disciple of the Dallas Cowboys more than a disciple of Christ. You trying to convert people to your favorite sports team and you won't even convert people to Jesus. You have Facebook wars talking about now Kobe better than LeBron. Oh, what about Jesus is greater than Satan? Come over to our side. I'm telling you, we got to be stirred up. It's time for the church to wake up and come out of its stupor and stand up and be a contagious church. We got to realize that we got the life and life held to ourselves is no good. We got to give that life away. This world need the life that is in us. What good is that life? We're going to keep it to ourselves. And we just go church week after week and there's no change. Then you think God going to accept your excuses. We're we just human. No, you just carnal. It's not that you just human. You're carnal because Paul said you act like mere men. In other words, you act like ordinary men. And so if you are born again believer, you are son of God and you sent to be his ambassador, his representative here in the earth. And so if the ambassador's not walking in the ambassadorship, who's going to represent? Who is going to represent if you're not walking in your ambassadorship? The government show not going to do it. They're not preaching the gospel in Congress. City council ain't meeting to, to determine what, which block they're going to take the gospel to next. No, that happens in the church. What, whatever area we're going to take over with the gospel. We already got strategies of what, what we're going with this gospel. But some of you ain't even hooked up to it. I'm tired. I don't even know if they got tired of this. They didn't work me a long time this week. I'm telling you, a hundred years from now, you ain't gonna care how many hours you go you work. You're gonna wish you had a worked in his vineyard. He said, You better store up treasures where moths and rust don't destroy. I'm storing up treasures for eternity. And I'm not saying you don't do natural things, but I'm not going to put natural things above the kingdom. Never that. He didn't save me for that. He saved me to be about the father's busy. Even the world tell you turn down for what? But the world, the church is turned down. The world turned up. Everybody then came out the closet. Weed smoking used to be a, 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 a frowned upon thing. Now they didn't legalize it. And they, they having debates that we should, you know, you know, these NFL players going through all this, they got a lot of pain. It ain't nothing really wrong with marijuana. I remember years ago they said it was a gateway drug to lead to harder stuff. They talked about how it messed your mind up. Now you're going to legalize what was once you declared wrong because we live in a lukewarm, gray area type of world. And I'm afraid that the church has become gray with the world. You got even Christians talking about they don't believe certain things sin. Ain't nothing really wrong with that. You lukewarm. 
You dead. You dried up. God called it twice dead. And I'm telling you, it's time for the data ourselves and get us a focus on the things of the kingdom because the things of the kingdom is the only thing that's going to last forever in your heavenly account. I was thinking about it on the way to uh, church today. You know, I minister to people. I'll be out sharing the gospel and some of them. We always work on Sunday. Why well, I'll be doing whatever I, I can to get me some Sundays off. When I just work on something, they okay with it. But the day going to come, they going to wish they had a did everything they could. And I'm telling you, I'm afraid that some of you, you learn to occupy places in seat. But you don't occupy the place in the kingdom. You've learned to get to a comfortable, comfortable posture. We're going to mess around one day and not have no seats in the sanctuary. Come to church one day, just stand up. Amen. Some of you just done got so complacent and you always, you want everything comfort. You want a certain park and play. And God forbid it's raining. Oh, my hair. Forget your hair. Am I worried about some hair when I'm thinking about somebody could go to hell forever? If my hair got to be messed up, if my stomach got to be torn up, if my shoes got to run over, if it's going to change somebody's life, what do I need to do? I'm telling you, the church got to wake up out of its stupor. It's easy to stay in that dead place and, and, and be blase about God's stuff. It ain't no urgency to it. You just, uh, we, we'll get to that. Y'all just too much. That's just too much. The world said turn down for what? Why would I turn down? But the church is turning down. The church is taking its time. The church has become a part of the world. It's mingled. Now you can't even tell the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. We talk like them. We dress like them. We act like them. Some things that you ought not do. I remember that years ago, they would teach all that bondage about dressing. Now we didn't get so free that we're out of control. When women, you, you stop covering your breasts up and you a saint. Don't nobody want to look at your cleave. Covers your little nasty self up. When that causing folks to look like they can't even look you in the eye, your big fat breast standing all up in their face. Cover your little nasty breasts up. Telling you the truth. We done got so free that we cause it. We use our freedom as an occasion for the flesh. Paying so tight you can see all your business. And I ain't talking about just women. I'm talking about men too just walking around. It's still a such thing as modesty. That don't mean you got to be in bondage with it. But it ought to be a thing that you, uh, that you check yourself out. And say, I don't want nobody looking at me other than a man of God. I don't want nobody looking at me other than a woman of God. I could wear this, but I'm not. I know you wear a size 8. You may need it in a 10. I'm telling you, it's time for the church to wake up. The reason we cannot keep our passion and our contagiousness is because we're entangled with some stuff. There's too much entanglement going on. And I'm telling you, we got to get the focus back on God. And we got to stir ourselves up. If we don't stir ourselves up, we're going to lose the life of God that's on the inside. Yeah. And folks have nerve, they be get offended. You come and tell them how they dress. Are you just jealous? Ain't nobody trying to tell us your little raggedy, boxed up self. The problem is you need to put your body and your flesh in check. Time for the church to get stirred back up with the fire of God. We need to have some heat of the gospel on the inside of us. We need to let people see Jesus in us again. They don't need to see my little regular flesh or your little regular flesh. They need to see Jesus. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto you, unto himself. I'm telling you, if we would allow Christ to be lifted up in our life, people can come and find Jesus. We got to be contagious. 
See, sometimes you got to begin to say some hard stuff to the church. He said judgment begins in the house of God. And people don't even want to talk about that type of stuff in the church no more. Oh, they're going to get mad. Let them get mad. You know, I ain't never understood somebody getting offended over what is right. Oh, pass away. He rebuked me. I'm, I'm going to another church. I'll hold it off for you. How you going to go to the, another church for being rebuked? God said, I chasten those whom I love. And so you know what I found out? A lot of people, they don't even know how to be sons of God. They don't know how to take chastening. Chastening is for our good. It ain't to hurt you. Well, I'm telling you, some of these little weak saints today, they couldn't bear it. They wouldn't have been able to take it back in the day when the, the old mothers would tell you, sit down and do your first works over again. Well, they snatch your tail down and say, sit down. You ain't got no, get some learning in you. You ain't preaching nothing. See, the problem is we, we, we don't want to be saints. We want to be ants. We want to be a, a, in between. We want to be a hybrid in the body. A piece of God and a piece of the world. You're not going to be contagious like that. Glory to God. Man, oh my goodness. That's a little rough, huh? And it's going on TV. <laughs> Put on verse 25. Man. Boy, y'all cut up in this house. Man, I'm telling you, that's the type of word that purifies you. That's the type of word that sanctifies you. That's the type of word that'll get the wall off of you. It's some, it's some things that Clorox can only get it out. You can't use washing powder. You need something a little heavier and a little harder to get it out of your life. Sometimes you need a word like that. Say, oh, oh, I need to get back in order. I was getting out of line. It's like a typewriter. Let me come on back in line now. It's some stuff that just needs to line you back up. Because you'll find yourself slipping. And I'm telling the world is lining this stuff up. And it's becoming more, it's more and more stuff that's coming out to distract you from the mission. All this stuff coming out to distract you from the mission. I was looking at the commercial. Some little new show done came out. It's the hottest show on TV. And, and few commercial breaks. And get all these stars that you like. And so you just caught up in that stuff. And next thing you know, you, you losing more of your fire of God on you. Wow, what a powerful message. I know God said something to you that just blessed you. But right now, I want to give those an opportunity that don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. All you have to do is repent and accept him as your Lord and your master. Why don't you pray this with me? Say, Father, please forgive me for sinning against you. Jesus, come in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Cleanse me, wash me from all my sins, and set me free from all the works of the devil. And write my name in your Lamb's book of life. If you truly meant that and you repented from your heart right now, you are a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Why don't you write us? Why don't you come and join us and let us help you grow in that relationship? Because you have just made the most important decision in your life. To all of our friends and our family, may you have a blessed and wonderful week. And remember, stay connected.